Microsoft's next generation gaming tech brings everything to the next level in a more efficient way than ever. Let's get into it. What is going on guys? Dealer back again with yet another video talking about a technology Microsoft are developing that will benefit all of their platforms, including not only the likes of the Xbox series of consoles, but their global scale in xCloud as well. But hey, thanks for joining me guys. If you enjoyed the video, maybe hit that like button, show a buddy or two and subscribe, things like that. You know the story. There's a lot to cover here in this interview and even more to explain. A very interesting, awesome technology in my opinion. There are also multiple ways this technology will benefit gaming for Microsoft Xbox in the future as well. Let me know if you made it to the end of the video, and of course, I'll see you in the comments. This is actually something I've been wanting to talk about for a week or so, finally getting time to put more time into a video, so this uh, has to be the one. Microsoft on the next generation of games and game development. Now, this is actually a glimpse at the future. There's actually some pretty deep stuff in here. One of the main reasons I wanted to cover is because there is constantly a fear of growing file sizes for video games. People always saying, hey, a terabyte's not gonna be enough, two terabytes is not going to be enough, and I agree, but Microsoft are working on a ton of technology here. Honestly, let me know your thoughts as we read through this because uh, this is a lot bigger than a lot of people even really realize. Completely changes the game, and it'll be interesting to find out more about this given that it is Microsoft's proprietary technology. They already have a studio working with this in-house. Systems like Lockhart that could have as little as eight gigabytes, believe it or not, could use this system, depending on how it works, to really achieve massive results. Now, this is one of the coolest new technologies coming out of next generation development, and it will help consumers in multiple ways on multiple platforms. Microsoft have found a way to deliver the goods, meaning 4K textures and all without making you pay the penalties for file sizes. Just one of the smart technologies they are working on, and we've got all of the details here. Now, there is a ton to unpack in this article, but I'm really gonna focus on one, maybe two things, but really in the grand scheme of things. Microsoft covered the way the industry is headed, how it used to be, and how it is today, along with the way publishers are thinking and much more. If you want to read it all, check out the link down below. As always, the source is there. But today we are specifically focusing on that which you will see, that which you have affecting you in your games, visual fidelity, and how they are changing the way that is brought to the consumer. A game's visuals consist of many different technologies that come together to create a consistent, believable image. Well, a big Part of that happens to be textures, and of course, the higher resolution, the more detailed things appear. The big negative there is that most of the bytes that come on the disk or most of that download is, in fact, texture packs. These are the reason you might have gone over your data cap last month. Well, Microsoft are talking the future of next generation games development for platforms like Xbox Series X and more, and they just may have a solution for that. The future of games at Microsoft. A journalist asks, what is Xbox? There's been a lot of rumors over time. Everything from Microsoft is going to get out of gaming to Microsoft is going to compete directly with Sony to Microsoft wants to be a live service. Horseman replies, I can only answer from my perspective. Gaming and Xbox is one of Microsoft's last great consumer businesses. A lot of people are working on Scarlet or xCloud and they feel a sacred responsibility. He sums that up by saying, frankly, it's a very profitable business. We figured out how to make it profitable and we've acquired a lot of studios. We're in gaming for the long term. Long story short, in this first part, he's talking about helping get back to his gaming roots and just basically try to get back to gaming. I think that's more than apparent with all of their acquisitions. They have over doubled the size of their studios in the last two years. And of course, their investment has never been higher. Microsoft can help by creating a new standard for the industry. He follows that up by beginning to talk about Microsoft GameStack. He says, we have this thing called GameStack. GameStack is our umbrella a marketing term for all of Microsoft game technologies. He says right now it's more marketing, but they are at the very moment making these things a reality. One of the biggest things they aim to do is provide a group of technologies that work together to help you deliver your game. And it's supposed to do all of this seamlessly. To sum this first part up, he's basically introducing Microsoft GameStack and the concept behind it. 
Toolkit, a group of technologies that work together to seamlessly help you bring your game to fruition, developing games for the next generation. Now here's where things get interesting. The journalist asks, how hard is next generation game development going to be for consoles like the Xbox Series X and PS5? Gwertzman replies, you were talking about machine learning and of course content generation. He says, I think that's going to be interesting. He follows that up by saying one of the studios inside of Microsoft has actually been experimenting with machine ML, models for asset generation. It's working scarily well. Yes, scarily well. It's working so well that it's to the point where we're looking at shipping really low res textures and then having ML models up res the textures in real time. He says you can't tell the difference between those and hand authored high resolution assets and models. It's so effective that you may as well ship the game with low res textures and let the machine take care of the work for you. And just so you know, machine learning is of course incorporated into things like RDNA 2. For instance, Playground Games have been talking about and playing around with this for quite some time, it's looking like they are actually going to utilize machine learning in the Series X and perhaps the Lockhart as well. After all, RDNA 2 is the architecture of the Lockhart and Series X, and it actually makes a lot of sense as to why they would enable this feature for the Xbox Series X. Something like this could make xCloud return revenue even more efficient by putting those boxes to work for other customers when not being used to stream games. Again, it's just one example and it's really quite clever. They have really thought about the future of this architecture and where it's going to be in 5 to 10 years, and it really goes to show you how serious they are about this system. And using this machine learning, they are able to ship these low resolution assets and let the machine, the software, the algorithm upscale and high res these textures in real time. We'll get back to what that means for you and gaming here in a second, but the journalist says, can you do this without any kind of install time? Gorsman says, not even install time, but runtime. Apparently, it is extremely extremely fast. The journalist says, to clarify, you're talking about real time, moving around the 3D space, level of detail, style? Gwartzman says, like literally not having to ship massive 2K by 2K textures. The journalist is searching for more clarification saying, are you saying that they are generated on the fly as you move around the scene or they're generated ahead of time? Gwartzman replies, the textures are being up in real time. Again, I'm not sure if this uses actual physical hardware or bandwidth, for instance, of maybe the console. For example, would it actually use the physical memory bandwidth of the RAM chips on the motherboard? If that's the case, maybe applications can be limited here, but perhaps one of you in the comments knows. Let me know. The journalist nails it right on the head here and says, so you can fit it on one Blu-ray. Gorsman says the download is way smaller, but most importantly, there's no appreciable difference in game quality. Think of it as more of a magical compression technology. That's really magical. It takes a huge R&D budget. He says, I look at things like that and say, either this is the next hard thing to compete on, hiring data scientists for a game studio, or it's a product opportunity. We could be providing technologies like this to everyone to level the playing field. Now, as I mentioned before, this is very important for the future of your data cap, of the size of these Blu-ray discs, of the amount of download you gotta do, of perhaps the efficiency of xCloud going into the future as we get RDNA 2 systems in those server blades. Ultimately, all of these things, as well as the amount of time it takes you to get into a game, all of these things stack. And what he's saying is all of that high resolution data regarding to those high resolution assets and textures are simply not needed Needed using this technology using machine learning they are able to ship with tiny low resolution textures and with this technology it will scale these up in real time and through this ml process it can reconstruct and recreate super high resolution assets all in real time without actually needing those physical assets there on your hard drive this could save you tens and tens of gigabytes worth of data easily per game and it's one example of a better compression algorithm that we have needed for quite some time except for this has found a way around the compression. With this solution, the compression isn't even needed to begin with. It is extremely smart. The journalist asks where the source data comes from. Does it come from everywhere or Microsoft Game Studios? How does the machine learning know what to do on what area? Quartzman replies, it only works by training the model in very specific sets, one genre of game. There is no universal texture map. That would be kind of magical. It's more like if you train it with a specific set of textures and it works with those, but it would not work with a whole different set. 
The journalist replies, so you need an artist to create the original set? Are there any legal considerations around what you feed into the model? Gortzman replies, it's especially good with photorealism, primarily because it adds tons of data. However, it may not work so well for something like a fantasy art style. He says, but my point is that I think the fact that there's a technology now, game development has always been difficult in terms of the sheer amount of disciplines. Art, physics, geography, UI, psychology, apparent conditioning, all these things we have to master. Then we add back-end services, latency, multiplayer, all of that is hard enough. Then microtransactions and economy models, running your own real store inside of your game. Now we're adding data science to the machine learning. The barrier seems to be getting higher and higher. That is where I come in. At its heart, Microsoft is a productivity company. The company mission is to help people achieve more. How do we help developers achieve more? That's what we're trying to figure out. Again, that's just one chunk of this article. And there's more. But what you can take away from that section is that they are using machine learning to basically up-res very high-resolution textures from what is essentially a low-resolution asset, at least in the way that it is built in the size that it takes on your hard drive or your disk. They are able to run that, scale it up using machine learning. That algorithm fills in the blanks and creates a high-resolution asset essentially out of nothing. But as it sits right now, it seems very very useful for not only hard drive space, again, tens and tens of gigs saved on a download. It seems like it would free up some kind of other system resource as well. You are not, after all, having to load in those physical assets on your hard drive or your SSD. It'll also help you with your data cap. That's always a great thing. And it may even make things like xCloud more efficient when streaming. Of course, once those RDNA 2 powered Lockhart SKUs hit those server blades in 2021. And again, something like Lockhart, which should have somewhere around 8 gigabytes or so of memory on the motherboard. If leveraging this technology provided that actual physical bandwidth is not a limitation, should be able to get more out of games using this technology. Let's not discount the fact that the Series X has been touting a large virtual pool of RAM in its SSD. If Lockhart has the same thing, then it will not truly be limited to 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, if that makes sense. There are other variables there, and it is a console first and foremost built for cost. It is the next generation Xbox One S. But at a navy powered 4 teraflops, it is about as quick as an Xbox One X on the GPU. CPU is several times faster. And again, at 60 FPS targeting 1080p, 1440p, you don't need quite all the RAM that the Xbox One X had, especially if it has that large virtual pool. But who knows, maybe I'm spitballing there a bit too much. Tell me your thoughts down below on all of this stuff. Very, very interesting. The fact that all of this is happening. The fact that the next generation Xboxes are architecture rdna2 just so happens to support machine learning and this machine learning is what actually enables this direct ml feature it's a concern i've heard a lot from people in the comment section it's one major way that you'll see games change over the next several years and it'll be interesting to see how else they use this again i'd love to talk to you guys about it in the comments down below hit the like button if you enjoyed the video maybe learn something today of course um, a lot of people probably didn't make it to the end of this but if you did honestly it improves efficiencies on ever expanding game sizes helps combat these data caps and so much more along with perhaps enabling these lesser bandwidth systems to utilize higher resolution assets again maybe show this to a buddy or two it really helps more than you know hit that bell icon for notifications and of course check out the source link down below in the description as well as maybe the patron if you want to support content like this hit that join button if you want to support the channel and as always subscribe for all of the latest cutting edge information i'm dealer i'm out